Are you familiar with Victory Gardens? Back in World War II, people were encouraged to grow their own food, and now because of the war against COVID-19, people have a sudden interest to grow their own food. A lot of these people have never grown gardens before. So that's why I'm starting this channel, because especially here in Florida, we have a lot of challenges, especially in our hottest months. So it's warming up here and summer is around the corner. Now the rest of the country is just starting to plant their gardens at this time, but our seasons are reversed. So what do we grow now? I'm gonna go over these plants that I recommend for starting a summer garden in South Florida. Initially, I wanted to do this video because I have a good friend who uh, asked me to get her victory garden started and with some plants that thrive in our summer heat. I'm going to start out with Katuk. Now this is a, a fresh cutting and it's, it's rooted and I have lots and lots of perlite in there because I've had a, a few of them just not do well because it had it, the potting soil, potting mix was too heavy. I like to root these in water. They usually root really well in my shower window. A great thing about Katuk, I love the, the taste of the tender leaves. The older leaves are good to eat too, but those go in my green smoothies. Uh, it's full of protein. Yucca. Yucca is something that <clears throat> is very easy to grow here. If you got a big plant, you can make a lot of cuttings with it. The leaves and the tubers are only edible after you cook out the cyanide. Last year was my first year growing yucca. It's also known as cassava. I actually like that name better, cassava. I had four plants and after 10 months, I had eight pounds of tubers. I'm including the aloe plant, aloe vera, because <clears throat> when this pandemic hit, I was washing my hands so much that on my fingers started cracking and opening up and on my thumbs especially. And then I realized, hey, I've, I need to start using aloe juice on my thumbs and fingers. Aloe juice is amazing. It has amazing healing properties. And within hours of me starting to use this, I started noticing a difference. And the next day, my fingers, the sores on my fingers had closed up. Egyptian spinach. Egyptian spinach is a new favorite of mine for the summer because it's another super easy to grow thing. And when you plant this, um, now I've got four right all together. You should be able to transplant these, separate them out. And when you transplant them, I recommend transplanting in the late afternoon when, when it's not so hot. You have to give it a chance to recover from the transplant shock. The leaves, just pretty much like longevity spinach, it doesn't have a whole lot of taste to it and it's nutritious. And Egyptian spinach does well in full sun. Okay, it looks like I have two different plants in here, but this is cranberry hibiscus. This one and this one I started from seed and these others I started from cuttings. These are, you can definitely transplant them out, separate them uh, if, if you want. This is one of the tastiest leaves you will ever have out of the garden. When I give a garden tour, it is the highlight of the tour because I let people taste it and to watch the look on their face when they taste that, they're totally surprised at the burst of tart flavor that it has. And this can also handle full sun. Another must have for a South Florida summer garden is this red amaranth. It's also known as red callaloo. You know, amaranth is known for its grains, but the leaves are super nutritious. It's full of lysine, so it's good for healthy skin. And I use it in my green smoothies, or you can, I guess you could probably add to some of the younger leaves to salads. And this will, will definitely handle very well in full sun. Moringa. Now, Moringa, I love making Moringa tea and keep plenty of Moringa tea in the refrigerator. It's so nutritious. Just try looking up the health benefits of Moringa and just read on and on and on and on. It's an amazing tree. What's so amazing about it is that it's a dynamic mineral accumulator. So the roots mine the earth 
and it brings the minerals and nutrients up to the leaves and the bark, the, the pods, and everything about it is edible except for the roots. This is Okinawa spinach, and it's like a sister plant to the longevity spinach, but as this matures, the, the bottom of these leaves will actually get purple. It's not as much of a ground cover as longevity spinach is, but it's a, a really good plant to have. This is one of my new favorites, the South Sea Salad Tree. I have one that I just recently transplanted full size into our landscaping. It's definitely one that works well as an edible landscape, especially for a time like this. And, you know, I've joked about this as being the zombie apocalypse type of plant that you want to have around that would look pretty in your landscaping. And then when you need food, when the food supply chain breaks down and we have long food lines, you know, this is something you can eat and it's actually delicious. This is fantastic to add to the green smoothies. This is one of my favorites to grow because it's so easy to grow and so easy to start with cuttings. The only reason why a cutting would not grow roots is if you are over watering it. And I've done that before. Um, this is longevity spinach. Longevity spinach is called longevity spinach because of its anti-cancer properties. And it's so easy to grow and once it gets growing it's like a thick ground cover it can handle shade it can handle partial shade full sun but it will definitely get wilty during the heat of the summer even in the spring it'll get wilty in full sun and this is great to put in green smoothies these here and some that i'm going to talk about in a little bit are ones that as you add them to your salad or to your green smoothies or whatever it's good to save the stem and I'll show you in a little bit on how to make a cutting actually I'll just show you right now so this one it snapped off so like say I'm, I'm peeling off all the leaves for my green smoothie see each place where a leaf came out those are called nodes and those nodes are where the roots have potential to grow once it's a cutting. So what you want to do, you want to cut it just below the node and have about two or three nodes that you can stick down into the soil. Initially, when I bought this from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, they sent me two small plants, and as they grew, then I, I would peel off the leaves, make a smoothie, and then start a new plant from what I cut off. And then, so two plants became four, four became... I love this plant. Next, here in South Florida, this is definitely a must to have. Uh, for any time of year. This is a uh, Everglade tomato and it's known to be wild in the Everglades and it's the easiest tomato to grow by far. So one thing about transplanting out tomatoes is I recommend you know peeling off the bottom leaves up to like maybe here and bury it deep. Everything that you plant within the soil will grow roots. Uh, here's another fairly new favorite of mine. This is a variegated version of Cuban oregano and you may not want to try eating these raw. It's super strong but it's great to make teas and especially if you have a cough you'll want to make a lot of tea from this. Next is Malabar spinach. So I have got two little seedlings coming up. Malabar spinach loves our summer heat and it's beautiful, a beautiful vine. You can hang it from a pot or it'll crawl up a trellis. Love to add it to our green smoothies. Sisu spinach, also known as Brazilian spinach. Uh, another great one to add to the green smoothies or to a salad. This handles full sun and it's a fairly new one for me too. And finally, holy basil. The leaves are a little droopy because it's still going through a little transplant shock. I just transplanted this yesterday. Holy basil is an adaptogen herb 
that is great for reducing stress and we're all dealing with a lot of stress right now and so I'm so thankful that I have a lot of this growing so well in my garden. So it's a, a great one to add to smoothies or salads. Once you get this growing, you won't ever have to plant it again because the seeds will just keep um, reseeding itself and it's a perennial, so it's not just gonna last for one season. Two more things I'll include in this list, papaya plants and pigeon pea. Pigeon pea is a legume and it puts nitrogen in the soil. The great thing about papaya plants this time of year is that they grow very quickly and that it won't be long before you'll be eating papaya. Pharmaceutical meds have their place, but I also know that food plays an important role in your health. Choose wisely because food can either be your poison or your medicine. Make health a priority because if you don't have your health, you have nothing. Let me know in a comment what subject you'd like me to cover in the next video. And if you got something out of this, please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel. And let's grow together. Thank you.